Welcome to Confessions of a Parent Coach. I'm coach, a mother of four, and potty talker, Ann Kaplan. This is the podcast where I confess something from my own parenting and coaching life, teach a lesson around it, and answer your questions. Even we parenting experts are far from perfect, and the real magic happens when we get down with all that imperfection. We get into the gritty side of parenting here, so earbud up and dive in. Welcome into another episode of the podcast, listeners. I'm excited to talk to you this week. Last week, we talked about something pretty complex and pretty heavy. I'm excited to talk about something that's pretty simple this week. (laughs) How does that sound? Let's talk about picky eating. Might not sound simple if you're dealing with a picky eater, but I hope you're going to feel differently when I'm done talking. And my confession for you this week, I am so excited to give you because my confession is that I don't have a confession. Sometimes when I'm coming up with these um, podcast episodes, I know the topic I want to talk about, but I'm trying to think like, what's my confession? Like, where's the time? I really try to think of like, when's the time when I really made a mistake around this topic or whatever. And I pulled my kids today. I'm like, you guys, I want to talk about picky eating, but um, I can't think of like a time when I like really messed up or, you know, dropped the ball on, you know, handling you guys when you were going through picky eating phases. And (laughs) the answer I got was like, no, mom. And I'm going to tell you verbatim what one of my kids said to me. No, mom, I don't think you've ever shit the bed on that one. (laughs) So maybe my confession is that my teenagers are horrible sailors when it comes to curse words. There you go. There's a confession for you. That that is a direct quote for my 15-year-old. But I also was like, that's kind of cool that even when you're like racking your brain to think of a mistake I made on this topic, you can't think of one like, wow, how many, how many parenting topics are there where like we actually like are doing such a great job that no, that our kids can't even think of one thing. I'm I'll take it. So But that does not mean that picky eating isn't a thing that has existed in our family or has driven me crazy in our family. It absolutely does. And my 15-year-old is the one who, when I said, I want to do a topic about picky eating, she goes, I'm the picky eater. I am so picky. And I was like, I know, but the problem isn't picky eating. It's how we handle picky eating. Like what mistakes have I made in handling your picky eating? And she was like, she tried to make a case for, uh, you know, well, sometimes you cook things I don't like. And I was like, okay. I personally do not consider that a mistake in handling picky eating, especially since we are a family of six. We are a family of six. There is no meal in the world that doesn't contain something that one person in this family doesn't like. And you could take it personally if you want to, but I think it's really just uh, statistics (laughs) at this point. But let's talk about picky eating. Because to me, how we handle food is one of the first like our first early opportunities to really be laying the groundwork with our kids about body autonomy. So even though it's food and I said, oh, let's talk about something simple today. Like, of course, there's deeper things that are built in, right? How we talk to our kids about food, how we deal with them, setting boundaries for themselves around food and, um, and being sort of in charge of what they eat and what they don't eat. It's huge, right? It's one of the very first like super concrete, tangible experiences a kid has of controlling their bodies and being in charge. And that's one reason why we see picky eating become very, um, you know, challenging for families during toddlerhood. So I'm just going to give you a couple of tips on how to handle picky eating. And the first is it's not a problem. This is like the number one message I want you to hear. <laughs> and my clients have probably, if you, if any of my clients out there are listening who have been dealing with picky eaters, I promise they have heard me say this before. It has never happened in the history of the world that a healthy child has starved to death while sitting in front of a plate of nutritious food. I used to say that to my clients in this kind of snarky way, or it's like, you know, man up, you know, and give your kid vegetables or whatever. But that's really not why I say that now. The reason why I say that to my clients now is to help you relax, is to help you realize that the stakes are not high here. They're really not. 
it's not a big deal if your kid doesn't eat, doesn't eat this meal, doesn't eat. Now, remember I said healthy kid. Of course, there are children out there who have like extreme health situations, diabetes, for example, or failure to thrive or things like that, where it actually does really matter if they eat this meal. I'm not talking about that today. That's a, that's a conversation for a different time. Or if you're a client of mine, we'll talk about that individually and come up with our individualized plan as we do. But for today, we're talking about healthy kiddos who are not in danger of starving to death by missing one meal, which is, I mean, in our country, thank goodness, most kids. And in that case, I want that message there has never in the history of the world been a case of a healthy child starving to death while sitting in front of a plate of nutritious food. I want that to help you lower the stakes in your mind. I want this to be a situation where you actually can embody neutrality because it's not a big deal. It's okay. It's not a problem if your kiddo chooses not to eat dinner tonight. It's not a problem if your kiddo chooses not to eat half their dinner tonight. It's not a problem. Because as soon as you think it's a problem, that is when your kiddo owns you big time. As soon as you're not neutral about food, your child will make you turn every color of the rainbow with rage and frustration and concern and every other emotion that exists simply by refusing to eat their dinner. And I talked about this a few weeks ago when it came to um, not just neutrality, but also um, the idea that kids need to feel autonomous, that all human beings crave autonomy and agency and independence. Food tends to be a really great stage for that to play out on. And so the more neutral that you are around food with your kid, the better for so many reasons. It's going to make the power struggle so much less. It's giving your child the message that they actually get to choose. They're the boss of their body. And it's also giving them the possibility to create healthy relationships with food and not starting to assign morality to food or, you know, all the food issues that most of us have in our generation. Wouldn't it be great if we could raise kids who get to sidestep that. It all starts with that neutrality around food. I want you to really have the attitude. You're the boss of your body. I, it's my job to provide. It's your job to decide. And by the way, I borrowed that from another coach. So don't give me credit. <laughs> it's our job as parents to provide. It's their job to decide. I have provided you with a reasonably, you know, kid-friendly plate of delicious and nutritious food. You get to decide what you do with that. It's their job to decide. And now if we can embody that neutrality, now we can start to create the container around food that's healthy and does not involve our agenda because we don't have one, right? Now we can do things like say, hey, in this family, dessert is for kids who eat their whole dinner. I don't care if you eat your whole dinner or not. I'm not going to try to fight with you about it. I'm not going to argue with you about it. I'm not going to negotiate with you about it. I'm not going to barter with you about it. Here's the way it is. Do what you want with that information. And I love you no matter what. I'm going to have a pleasant meal with you, whether or not you eat your meal. I'm going to be totally in love with you and celebrate you and respect your choices. I want you to imagine that when your child says, I hate chicken, you say, wow, I'm glad you know how you feel about chicken. Way to listen to your body, babe. I'm not going to eat this. It's disgusting. You know better than I do if you're hungry. Way to listen to your body. My kids have heard me say, good job listening to your body. So many times they probably want to, you know, roll their eyes and puncture their own eardrums at the same time, right? They've heard it a million times because these um, efforts that all kids make to try to, you know, rope you in and either possibly get something a little junkier for dinner or at least piss you off, they just don't work with me, you know? And that doesn't mean that my kids eat every meal. They absolutely do not. They really do not, I promise. Um, and it certainly doesn't mean that they're respectful and kind and appreciative of every meal that I make. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't. I still have a picky eater or two in, on my hands. I still have meals where nobody likes it. I, ha I still have meals where everyone rolls their eyes because I already made chicken three times this week. I, all that stuff. It all happens. It's just not a problem. 
it all comes back to that idea of like, it's not for me to say if you're hungry or not. It's not for me to say if you like a food or you don't like a food. It's not for me to say if it's more important to you to, you know, draw this line in the sand than it is for you to go to bed hungry or not. Like you get to decide all of that stuff and it doesn't phase me. That's the number one most important thing about picky eating. So the first thing I said, you know, I want to take the stakes down. It's not a problem. Neutrality, right? Now, number two, we can set boundaries. And then because we're neutral, we don't need to do the whole arguing and all of that stuff. We just enforce our boundaries. If you ate your dinner, here's your dessert. If you didn't eat your dinner, no problem. We can also have boundaries about how long dinner is. Dinner's going to be over in 15 minutes. So we're not being held hostage at the table by a kiddo who's like, I'm not done. I'm still eating, but they're not actually eating. And they're making everyone want to like just fall asleep at the table and wake up in the morning (laughs) right in front of the same plate of food, right? All of those boundaries are possible because we are neutral and we're able to enforce those boundaries healthily without cajoling and negotiating and getting upset and losing our temper or bartering or bargaining. None of that because we're neutral. Yep. Dinner's over. Oh, no, I changed my mind. I want to eat my food. Oh, I know. I know what you mean. I always regret it when I decide not to eat dinner and, and then I'm hungry later, but don't worry. You're going to get a big breakfast in the morning. Maybe you'll make a different choice tomorrow night when it's dinner time. No need to, you know, ne- once again, no need to negotiate all that stuff. It's all just water off a duck's back. And it gives us the opportunity to use all that great languaging. You're the boss of your body. You know best if you're hungry or not. If you say you're not hungry, I believe you. You know, all of that stuff. No, no, no need to do anything other than validate whatever it is that our kids are bringing up at the table. And then the last thing I'm going to say about picky eating is do not, you know, there's a line and you get to decide where that line is, but there's a line between being thoughtful about what you make for dinner. Like I'm not going to serve my kids a plate of like spicy hot peppers and liver and onions. I know that they won't like that and they don't like spicy food and all of that stuff. But I would serve my kids like a casserole that I made that has all food that they like in it, but they've never seen it that way before with the full knowledge that half of them are going to be like, "Mm," and not eat it. But so you get to decide what is the line for you of like, I'm going to be thoughtful about what I serve for dinner. I'm going to eat, I'm going to serve foods that, you know, I know that if they gave it a chance, it would be reasonable for them to like it or, or at least tolerate it and all that stuff. Where is that line between that and I only ever make hot dogs and chicken nuggets because I'm sort of catering to my child? It's a different line for everybody. You get to make that distinction for yourself. But what I encourage you not to do is let's say you were having varied food in your family and lots of different healthy things, vegetables on the plate, all of that stuff. And now your two or three year old all of a sudden has decided to be like Mr. Picky. And now you've decided, okay, well, last night there was like a big tantrum because I put broccoli on the plate. I guess I won't serve broccoli anymore and start, start to like kowtow to the kids to the point where they're never actually experiencing that container that we talked about, because all you're doing is just giving them whatever they want. And that pretty soon they're having like Nutella sandwiches for breakfast and goldfish crackers for lunch and catch up in a, in a bowl with a spoon for dinner. (laughs) You know, you decide, you get to decide, right? Like you get to decide where that line is. You get to decide like, what is a healthy meal look like for you and your family? All of those things, obviously. But, uh, you know, once you have made that decision, stick by that decision. That means that you have chosen, like, this is the standard in our family And I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to do my work to be neutral about it so that I don't get so stirred up when you choose not to eat dinner that now we are having a battle of wills over food. Because that's the last thing I'm going to say here is kids, the intensity piece is huge. Toddlers especially value emotional intensity from us. All human beings crave energy, intensity, and emotion from the people around them. And unfortunately, our brains aren't great at distinguishing good attention and bad attention. We all know people who 
attention seek and they're totally cool to get the negative attention. When we get upset or worried or bargaining or frustrated or yelling or whatever with our kids about food, we are giving them intensity and intensity is 10 times more delicious than whatever you put on that kid's plate. Your child will literally choose, even if they are hungry, not to eat if it means it will piss you off. That's what I'm saying. You being pissed off is more exciting and more enticing than a plate of chicken nuggets, even the the universal kid pleaser food, (laughs) right? And because intensity is so intoxicating to kids and because intensity is so distracting, it literally gets in the way of them even being able to check in and say, do I feel hungry right now? Or do I like this food that I'm eating? They can't even answer any of that. There's no self-awareness left because they're completely and entirely consumed by our upsetness or our agenda or our emotions. So that's the last thing I'm going to say. I know it's like neutrality first, neutr- and I'm just, I'm wrapping back up with neutrality as I want to stress how important it is if we want our kids to grow up with healthy relationships with food, healthy relationships with their bodies, and healthy relationships with their agency. Meaning, I know, like it's crazy to think that that how you behave with your two year old around dinner could actually be a piece of their puzzle in understanding what consent means when they're a teenager and they know that no means no and that they have every right to expect that when they set a boundary around their body, it will be respected. It's crazy to think that those two things are connected, but they absolutely are. And that doesn't mean that by doing this, you're guaranteeing that your kiddo is going to be like super, you know, autonomous and great about setting boundaries with their bodies. There's a million other things that impact that too, right? But this is a piece of the puzzle. When you think about it, the way we raise our kids, eat this, you have to finish your dinner, eat this food that you're telling me you hate, eat this food, even though you just told me you're full, we're constantly basically telling them like, I know your body better than you do. Let me be the decider about when you're hungry and what foods you like and what foods you should like. Like, We're constantly undermining our kids' mind-body connection, their agency, their self-awareness. Even just with our emotions, we're doing that. Because that kiddo who's watching their mom beg and plead to eat their broccoli has completely lost sight of whether they're even hungry or not right now. And if I ask that kiddo, are you hungry right now? They're first going to do the deduction in their mind, like which answer is going to get the most emotional reaction from my kid? Yes or no. The answer that I get from that kid about whether or not they're hungry isn't even accurate because it's entirely colored by how is this going to go down with the people around me? Instead of them actually, instead of checking in with themselves or checking in with their parent to see, hmm, how do I want to play my cards right now? Instead of checking in with themselves and being like, actually, I am kind of hungry or no, I don't feel hungry at all. I had a really big snack before dinner and being able to say like, I'm not hungry right now, or I am hungry. I'm really hungry. And I've been refusing to eat this dinner that you put in front of me because I wanted, you know, to make a stand. But if I'm honest with myself, I actually just want to eat it. That, that realization is only possible if we don't care. You see how that is? It's so weird, but it's true. So very short and sweet in this week. Hopefully simple, right? This isn't like these crazy esoteric concepts. I did manage to wrap in there like sex and consent and body autonomy. So, you know, you're never going to get anything that's just surface level with me. That's just not how I roll. (laughs) But still... Very tangible, very actionable. You can do this. You can do it. And if you can't, I get it. Like there are a lot of emotions wrapped up around food for us. I am working actively to unlearn all the nonsense that I learned about my body and food growing up as a woman in America. And that stuff is heavy. It's it's present. There are tons of clients that I work with who we can talk about all this stuff on paper, but when it comes to actually being neutral about their kids and food, they have a really hard time with it 
because they have their own baggage that they haven't worked on yet. So that's, that's a piece of the puzzle, right? If executing this stuff is challenging for you for whatever reason, doesn't have to be this big psychological reason. That's why I'm here. It's my job to understand what's going on with you and help you understand it. It's my job to help you create a plan that you actually can stick with. I, it's my job to help you remove all the obstacles that are in the way. And it all starts with that free discovery call that you hear me talk about every week. Set it up. It's a chance for you to sit down with me and tell me everything that you're up against, all of the things you've tried so far, why they haven't worked, what you're looking for, what you want things to be like between you and your kiddo. And for me to give you a roadmap to making that happen. I can't wait to see you and talk to you in a dialogue instead of a monologue. And I hope you have a great week. Bye, everybody. The episode is over, but there's more waiting for you. You can grab my free workbook, Getting Kids to Listen the First Time, that walks you through the fundamental principles I teach all of my clients and applies them to this very universal parenting challenge. So if you're sick of repeating yourself all day long or just want to learn more about my style, you'll definitely want to go to bit.ly slash kids who listen. And if you're ready to work with me, let's meet. Set up a free call at bit.ly slash Kaplan call, and let's create an action plan that gets you exactly where you want to go. And of course, links to all this goodness are in the show notes. Thanks for joining, and I'll see you next time.